All right, so you made it to paramedic school. You've gotten your acceptance letter. What is the number one way that we can actually prepare for school? Well, I can tell you this. Students drop out. Students fail out of paramedic school when they don't know cardiology. I'm gonna get you today an awareness level of some of the things you need to know before you go into paramedic school. Make sure you smash that like button and you're subscribed. Now, let's start with this. Inherit rates. I got a beautiful outline for you and I got a beautiful slide coming up with pictures. We're gonna go over this. But I first wanna introduce this concept to you. In the heart, we learned in EMT school <clears throat> that there's heart blood flow. The mechanical function of the heart, blood flows to the heart with the atria and the ventricles. So the system in the heart that we haven't learned about yet, which is the electrical conduction, the electrical system of the heart. That's how we get an EKG on the life pack, okay? An EKG, we can see and read the electrical activity of the heart, and that can tell us, for example, if the patient's having a heart attack or not. That's an EKG, okay? That's very important to paramedicine. Now, the heart has different starting points, which I'm gonna show you in pictures in a moment, but I wanted to show you this first so it makes sense. The SA node is where your sinus rhythms, your normal sinus, your sinus tack, your sinus bradycardia, your sinus arrhythmia, your normal sinus rhythms start from, or like me and you sitting right now, we're probably in normal sinus. The SA node is where the normal conduction of the heart starts. So when the SA node is in charge, the heart rate goes from 60 to 100 beats per minute under normal conditions when I'm just sitting down, relaxing, right? The AV node, if something happens and I get rid of the SA node, it's gone, I'm gonna block it. And the AV node takes over. We get 40 to 60 on a beats per minute. Folks, the AV node, the nickname for it, is the junction of the heart. You're gonna see in the picture in a moment, it's right in the middle of the heart. There's rhythms out there called junctional rhythms. Well, a normal junctional rhythm happens to go at the rate of 40 to 60 because that EKG is being run by the AV node, not the SA node. It failed. So the AV node takes over. If the SA fails, the AV takes over. If the AV node fails, the ventricle takes over. There's a rhythm out there called the idioventricular rhythm. Whoa. All that means is the ventricle's in charge of the heart rate, and it's 20 to 40. So what does this mean, folks? Let's go through it together. Here we go. If I have a sinus rhythm, okay, and my SA node is still functioning, I'm going to be 60 to 100 unless, again, other factors cause your rate to go up and down. Hang with me. AV node, the junction of the heart, a junctional rhythm, 40 to 60. If the SA node fails, AV node takes over. AV node fails and SA fails. The ventricle says, well, I got to take over. The bottom of the heart takes over, okay? 20 to 40. The SA node is a normal pacemaker for the heart because it's the fastest, quite simply, okay? Now, I want to show you this picture. I'm going to zoom out here in the corner. But I want to show you this. This is very important. This is the conduction system of the heart. Welcome to paramedic school. This little gold circle here is the SA node I've been talking about this whole time, okay? What happens is we have the electrical impulse that starts in the SA node. This impulse is gonna go through. We have to make sure we have the electrical activity going through to both atrias, okay? And we can see here, these are called internodal pathways. Internodal pathways. We have here Bachman's bundle, okay? So don't, I guess we're getting crazy with words here, but hang with me. We're making sure in the beginning of the heart, of, of the heart uh, beat, if you will, the electrical conduction, if you will, we're conducting through the atria, okay? Through internodal pathways, Bachman's bundle, okay? See, it goes from over here to the left atria. Well, eventually this impulse goes down into our junction. It's kind of in the middle of the heart, which is the AV node right here, okay? Right beyond the AV node is the bundle of Hiss right here, okay? After our bundle of Hiss, you may have heard this term before, bundle bundle branches, bundle branches. So we have both a right and a left 
bundle branch. At the very end, we have the Purkinje, the Purkinje fibers, okay? The Purkinje fibers at the very end. So what this means, folks, is if my SA node's working, the, elect the electrical conduction goes like this. Look here, folks, if I block off the SA node, okay? If the AV node's in charge, then we know we have, most likely, it's probably gonna be a junctional rhythm. If these two both fail and there's a problem with the heart, now the ventricles are in control. How well am I gonna produce a heartbeat? How well am I gonna produce electrical activity in the heart if these fail? Not very good. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is what normal looks like, okay? We have to know this is so important for paramedic school because this is how we know what happens with the EKG, which we're gonna talk about next. Remember, we have the atrias and the ventricles. Let's go to the next step. So right here now we have our EKG. We have to understand what the waves are of the EKG of what we're looking at. This is what normal looks like. So here we have the P wave. Now the P wave, the first positive deflection, meaning see how the wave points up? See how this wave points down? See that wave points down? A positive deflection is a, a wave that points up. A negative deflection is a wave that points down, okay? So the P wave represents the atria depolarizing, meaning the electrical activity is moving through the atria like we just saw when you see a P wave. The P wave represents the atria, it's the atria's turn to fire, it's the atria's turn to go off. It represents atria depolarization. The electrical current is going through the atria. P wave. The QRS, three different waves, but they're all tied together in a complex or a, you know, a, what is it, a complex of waves called the QRS complex. Now the Q wave is not always in every patient, okay? The Q wave is the first negative deflection if it's there. Now everyone ha is born with a, having a Q wave, okay? Q wave. Q R S. So first negative Q wave, second positive deflection, one, two, C, two, R wave, and then the second negative deflection on the EKG is the S wave. So the QRS complex represents the electrical current, the electrical conduction going through the ventricles. The QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization. That is the electrical current going through those ventricles. That's the QRS complex. The T wave is represented by when the ventricles relax. It's ventricular, ventricular repolarization. Okay. Now you're probably saying, when does the atria relax? Well, the QRS is so big, we don't see a wave for when the atria relax. So remember folks, depolarization means the electrical current is going through that spot at time. Repolarization means now we rest and wait for the next current. With me? So atria goes, ventricles go, ventricles rest. That's your basic of the EKG. A few more things I wanna point out, okay? See this line right here before the P wave, okay? We also see this line after the T wave, okay? That is your isoelectric line. That is your baseline EKG where there's no waves, there's no activity. It's your baseline, okay? We also see here something called the PR interval. Well, the PR interval starts at the beginning of the P and all the way until the QRS complex starts, okay? And also look here for the ST segment. The ST segment goes from the end of the um, S wave to the beginning of the T wave. Why is this important? I'm gonna show you right now. Right here, this ST segment, okay? When we do a 12 lead KG, which we're going to talk about in a second, a little intro to that in a second here. So we know what we're looking at when we look at our, you know, paramedic 12 while we're in school. So I want to look at that. 
Now we have a similar thing of what's going on, right? The SC segment is where we look at and, you know, for lack of a better word, diagnose or find out the patient's having a heart attack. The SC segment will be elevated. It will be up here. And if they have ischemia, meaning the heart's being choked, the, car the coronary artery is being choked, the this line will be down here, depressed, which we call ST depression or ST elevation. And it's based upon looking at, is this line in line with this? Or is this line above or below this? And we look at that on 12 weight EKG. Pretty cool. Now I just want to show you for our third segment here, what a 12 weight EKG looks like. And we're going to look at it together and we're going to plot on. Okay, lead one is looking at what? Lead is another word for views of the heart. Let's take a look at it. You are looking at right now a normal 12 weight EKG that I hope mine looks like and yours and all your patients. Okay. First off, why do we do a 12 weight EKG? Well, we do a 12 weight EKG if someone has chest pain, unexplained abdominal pain, unexplained back pain, right? Difficulty breathing, nausea, vomiting, right? I like to say if they have pain from basically their neck to their hips, you could do a 12 weight EKG because heart attacks are sneaky in some populations. The elderly, diabetics, female patients, they may not present with, oh, there's pain in my left arm and I got crushing chest pain and I can't breathe. That's usually classic as a male heart attack. A woman might go, huh, my back weight hurts and I keep throwing up. Right? A diabetic will be like, I don't feel anything, but I can't breathe. Again, pain from literally, you got really, really bad pain from your neck out of nowhere to, again, your abdomen, basically your stomach. Do, your, do an EKG, it's not going to hurt. Just putting stickers on someone's chest, not a big deal. I want to give you a little intro on this, okay? And by the way, if you're loving this content and you're loving this video, smash that like button, guys. Hit subscribe. You're not going to see us anywhere else on YouTube here, okay? Smash that like button hit subscribe. And it, by the way, if you didn't know, I have a program that helps people get ready for school, helps students while they're in school pass their tests and quizzes, and also helps them pass National Registry. It's an app study tool called the Video Vault. Uh, videos, prax questions, worksheets, or community group. Over 60,000 students have gone through this. So it's the first link in the description. And we don't charge you per month. We charge you one time and have lifetime access. So check it out. First link in the description, but more on that later. Here's our EKG. When I say that we have leads, I'm looking at a certain lead. A lead is a view of the heart. So I just want to teach you, when you're looking at a certain lead, what part of the heart are you looking at? Okay? This is very important. Lead one looks at the lateral, the side, the lateral wall of the heart. Lead one, AVL, V5, and V6 all look at the lateral, the sides, the lateral wall of the heart. You have to remember that. Because when we start figuring out, and again, first link in the description, you can learn all about this. We have a whole master class on this stuff. If we have elevations, ST elevations that we see in leads that look at the same views, we can have a heart attack. Okay? Not gonna go over all that right now in this video, but I wanna give you a little intro on this now. Okay? So one AVL, V5, V6, lateral. Two, three, and AVF. They look at the bottom of the heart, the inferior wall of the heart. AVR is advanced. We're going to table that for now. Okay, but AVR has no friends, hangs out. V1 and V2 look at the septum, the, basically the middle, the septum of the heart, the septal wall. V3 and V4 look at the front, the anterior part of the heart. Okay. Now, there's some other parts of the heart that I have, don't show here. Well, two parts. One, what about the right side of the heart? 
If I want to look at the right side of the heart, I got to move the leads from the left side and move them to the right. If I want to look at the back of the heart, I got to put three leads on the, um, literally on, on the same side, but across on your back to look at the posterior, the back of the heart, the posterior wall of the heart. Your normal 12 weight EKG looks at lateral, inferior, septal, and anterior. Now, what's this in the bottom? This lead two going across. Well, folks, we cannot read a 12 weight EKG until we actually know what the underlying rhythm is. And I want you to remember this. Where do we look to find the underlying rhythm? It's always lead two. This is normal sinus rhythm. I can see a P wave for every QRS. The, the rate is normal and it's a regular rhythm with normal sinus. This is a normal sinus 12 EKG. There's no elevations or depressions here in the SD segment. Now, again, this may seem like, whoa, this is a lot. Again, this is why so many people struggle with cardiology. If you want to go over this now and you want to learn more, again, first link in the description is access to our video vault program. You're going to love that. And I'm here for you, Evan, the paramedic coach. Hit me up with comments. Hit me up with questions. Always here to help. We even do lives this channel. And folks, I will see you on the next video. Let's go. Great work.